This video is designed to walk you through the key stages of basic paediatric life support that you will need to know for your OSCE. Please note that this is for OSCE purposes only. You will need to look into this area in greater detail for you to become fully competent as a clinician. And this will be backed up by your own background reading and clinical placement. For all details, you're advised to refer to the UK Resuscitation Council guidelines on the subject. This video will cover the following areas. Initial scene assessment, initial approach to the patient, basic airway management, identifying cardiac arrest, and cardiopulmonary resuscitation, or CPR for short. We'll cover main points here and go into a little more detail later on. So initial scene assessment. For this, you'll be using a smart approach. So first, we're looking at scene safety, and this includes appropriate personal protective equipment, or PPE, infection prevention and control, and any dangers to you or those around you. For mechanism of injury, we need to include C-spine and catastrophic hemorrhage. You'll also need to look at additional resources, so at this point you should request help in whatever form you deem necessary. Regulatory includes any DNARs, advanced directives or recognition of life extinct situations that may be present. And triage, is this your only patient? So if we take an initial approach to the patient, we need to check for a response. And for that, we're going to look at the alert, verbal, pain, or unresponsive scale, or AVPU for short. We'll then move on to basic airway management. So first thing we need to do is look in the airway. Are there any foreign body obstructions? Then we'll open the airway. We'll size up and place an OPA. And we'll look, listen, and feel for breathing for up to 10 seconds. We're then going to provide five rescue breaths and then reassess breathing and check for a pulse. It's at this point that we're probably gonna identify cardiac arrest if it exists. And that will mean that there's no breathing, there'll be absent pulses or pulse of less than 60 beats per minute in the pediatric algorithm. We'll then start CPR. And for this, you're gonna use an appropriate technique dependent on the patient's age, have a ratio of 15 compressions to two effective ventilations, a rate of 100 to 120 per minute, and a third of the depth of the chest. So now let's examine some of those areas in more detail. So here we have a patient estimated to be around about six months old, and we're going to assume that we've been through the standard scene assessment, smart approach, etc., and we're looking at the initial approach. So remember, we need to check for a response looking at the AVPU scale. Hello? Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me? So there we've checked for a response from the child in a couple of different ways. We've used an auditory response both through speaking to the child and through the hand claps. And we've checked for a pain or physical response by squeezing the child's earlobe or by tickling the feet. There are of course other methods that you can use, but remember that the objective is to check the child's response without causing any injury to the child. So now we're going to look in the patient's airway and check for any foreign body obstruction and we need to open the patient's airway so we need to consider patient positioning in this instance. Now because of the child's age it means that their occiput is going to be a lot larger relative to the size of their body and what that does is it takes the airway out of alignment. So we need to bring that airway back into as good an alignment as we can and to do that we're going to place something under the patient's shoulders. We're then going to size up and place an oropharyngeal airway or OPA and remember that we need to size this from the angle of the jaw to the level of the incisors or to the gums depending on the age of your patient. And unlike adults we're going to insert it in a way that follows the anatomy of the oropharynx and we're going to do that so that we avoid damaging the soft palates at the roof of the mouth. So if we look at this in real time we're going to look in the patient's airway we're then going to reposition the patient so that we put the airway in neutral alignment. We're then going to size up an OPA and we're going to insert it anatomically to maintain that airway. So next we need to expose the patient's chest and then we're going to look, listen and feel for breathing for up to 10 seconds. In the absence of breathing, we're then going to perform five rescue breaths, and that's ensuring that we have a good seal on the mask and are getting good rise and fall of the chest. We're then going to reassess breathing while simultaneously checking for a brachial pulse in this aged child, but we would check for a carotid pulse in any child over the age of one. 
and this check is also for no more than 10 seconds. Now here we're going to diagnose cardiac arrest and remember to do this we need an absent pulse or a pulse of less than 60 beats a minute according to the paediatric algorithm. In the event of cardiac arrest we're going to start CPR and we're going to use an age appropriate technique. For this age child we'd be using two fingers although for an older child we may use one hand or two hands depending on the size of the child concerned. And remember that we're going to use a ratio of 15 to 2 at a rate of 100 to 120 beats a minute and a third of the depth of the chest. So that concludes our basic paediatric life support procedure. Remember that for all details you need to look at the UK Resuscitation Council Guidelines 2015. And when it comes to your OSCE, have a look at your OSCE sheet and ensure that you pay particular attention to everything that is double starred as that's essential for you to be able to pass. We hope you found this useful. If you have any questions or concerns, as always, please do contact one of the lecturing team.